Effectively, it feels like our season's over because if you start talking about Chelsea winning the FA Cup, it feels slightly optimistic considering everything that we know about Chelsea. That does it really, though. You've got Leicester in the quarterfinals. It, it feels optimistic to say that we're going to win it because at some at some point we're going to run aground. At some point we're going to come up against a team that are far far superior to us, want it far more than us, have a far better manager than us, and ultimately we will we will struggle. And also our league position is 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 so it's incidental it's it's, well it's so incidental we we now you know how you flagged the fa cup what is this like 1994 all over again it, we're we're a chelsea team languishing in mid table dreaming of an fa cup to somehow salvage a season yeah you're a cup team now you're, yeah you're, you're a cup team that's what you are no, but no, we're not but are we no, because no, because to call to call a team a cup team like i'd say that the the chelsea team of the mid to late 90s was a cup team because we cup. had genuinely we we genuinely had a had a, a serious opportunity to win cups and we did win cups I don't think we're a cup team now because I don't think we have a chance of winning the FA Cup what did you make and look be as brutal and as honest as, as you want to be uh, full time whistle of obviously Virgil van Dijk scoring in that second uh, period of extra time what were your initial feelings as Virgil van Dijk uh, went past your players headed it into the far corner what, what were you thinking gut th- thinking right then well, it felt it. The worst feeling I think that I felt as as Van Dyke scored was that there was an in- inevitability to it. I kind of knew that Chelsea weren't going to win the game. I kind of knew that Chelsea were going to capitulate when it most mattered, which is a complete and utter redress from the team that Chelsea once were. Chelsea once were a team that could get a result against anyone, anywhere, regardless of the opposition. We could win in the most difficult of circumstances. Going to play arguably the best team that has ever existed away in Barcelona, not getting beat. Going to Munich to play against Munich, playing in their home stadium in a European Cup final, Chelsea somehow find a way. Playing at Na- playing against Napoli, that brilliant Napoli side, uh, you know, Lovetsy and Cavani and, and, and uh, Hamsic and all of that, Chelsea somehow find a way. This Chelsea team will capitulate. We managed to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory time and time again. And the overriding terminology that I would use to describe what happened at Wembley, I think it was cowardice. I think Chelsea displayed. I thought I thought cowardice. you were going to say bottle jobs there. Obviously, well, that's you know, Gary interesting. That's them interesting. Billion pound bottle jobs. Yeah, and I, which, I, I, which obviously I ran with because I think it was a fantastic piece of commentary from Gary Neville. I agree. What with was you. your take on it? Well, firstly, I think it's completely and utterly accurate. I don't think Gary Neville said anything wrong. I don't think he said anything inflammatory. I don't think he said anything provocative. He called bottle jobs, bottle jobs. Well, was it a collective? Like, was there anyone in that? In, in how many subs did you use in the 14, 15 that you felt okay? You fought for the shirt today are you talking about a collective of bottle jobs I, I think I think that no, nobody really nobody really shone you know I thought I thought Conor Gallagher desperately tried but then he's going to be he's going to be remembered for missing those chances yeah. but he certainly he certainly gave it but I think as a team we were we were cowardly like if you, if you think do you know what there were two things that made me really think this the second half of the second half of extra time yeah like surely that is the moment where a player like Enzo Fernandez, a World Cup winner, somebody who plays in central midfield, somebody like him is going to dictate the tempo of the game. That's where a player like that should shine. Mm. Vanished, totally invisible, totally anonymous, not there whatsoever. And then there was another moment which I actually found even more painful. And in fact, this moment in the game, I think is a microcosm for who Chelsea are and also who Liverpool are. Conor Bradley. Connor, Connor Bradley in that moment with Ben Chilwell. Yeah. You're talking about that, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. When when Connor Bradley and Ben Chilwell had had that moment of of anger between the pair of them, little square up and face I, to face. Yeah, and I don't think. Look, I think that I think that Ben Chilwell was probably right and wrong in equal measure, and I think that Connor Bradley was probably right and wrong in equal measure and ultimately nobody did anything wrong nobody did anything that you wouldn't expect what you want to see in a cup final is determination what you want to see in a cup final is that element of spite and that element of fight and after that incident when that happened what you noticed immediately within seconds within seconds in Ben Chilwell's face like split second Harvey Elliott straight away Harvey Elliott's there front and centre really giving it Cody Gakpo follows Joe Gomez wasn't slow Immediately, it's one versus four. Oh, no, wait, wait, Levi Colwell's there. Col- no, Colwell got there, but it wasn't immediate. What I'm talking about, I'm talking about, you know when that melee starts? Mm. Gen- 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 generally, when something like this happens, and this is this is as true on a football pitch as it is in a town centre on a Friday night. When it happens, it happens quick, it's a spark, and it's almost over within five seconds. So it, you have to be f- quick. <laughs> and Harvey <laughs> Elliott, rapid, on the front foot, aggressive, passionate, backing his mate. 
Conor Gallagher got there. Conor Gallagher deserves praise here. Levi Colwell deserves praise here. But that was basically it. Whereas immediately, Gakpo, Joe Gomez, front centre, and for, for one second of the five-second melee, for one second, Ben Chilwell was on his own terrified. Like, that shows you the team. That Big shows Canate you... ran up as well, didn't he? Yeah, look, yeah. ultimately. But, but then the question I would ask as well, it's all very well going, you know, Colwell got there and he did and, and uh, Gallagher got there and he did. But, you know, like, the spine of the team is who's meant to do that. Like, where's Moises Caicedo when that's going on? Where's Enzo Fernandez when that's going on? There's two central midfielders. If I were to say to you, name the most combative, aggressive, brilliant footballers, you'd probably go, I don't know, Keen Vieira. Obviously, we know that Steven Gerrard had a tackle in him. We obviously know that uh, Frank Lampard had an element of spite and an edge to his game. Central midfielders, right? That's that's the position. They're the geezers that do this. They're the ones that play on the front foot, go for it, bully the game and will not allow their players to be bullied. Keen and Vieira, the, the jewels in the crown of this. Caicedo and Fernandez, they didn't even come over, mate. They weren't even there. They weren't even their fullback is being roughed up by Harvey Elliott as well, by the way. And Caicedo's just watching. And I think it do you know where I think it stems from? I think it stems from the managers. I think everything that Jurgen Klopp does. You know when people mock Klopp, maybe when, you know when he does that that punching thing towards the cop, or even, do you remember against West Brom when they're, cele- yeah, when they're celebrating? Which was away. smart to do. Well, what that does is it builds team spirit, doesn't it? What you're doing there, people will mock it, but what you are doing is you're building unity. You're building a, something unifying. You're building a togetherness. Yeah. So that when those incidents happen on the pitch, everyone's got each other. Everyone's back. there. Yeah. Everything that Pochettino has done, so everything Klopp does since he's been at Liverpool has been a unifier. Everything Pochettino does has been something that has has segregated. Uh, with that, uh, very quickly on this, because we are going to talk uh, a bit of Chelsea uh, after the break as well, but with that, Pochettino, um, I, I know you were, I never, you were never a fan. You got on mm. board because obviously you got to back your Chelsea manager, but you were never a fan from the beginning. Should he still be in the job? No, of course he shouldn't. Of course he shouldn't. He should have been sacked weeks ago. Like, Of, of course he shouldn't. I, he isn't the right man for the job. I think that... He has. He is responsible for everything that we spoke about there. He is responsible for making the bonds that should unify a football club. The bond between the well, fan well, and the well, players. He didn't, he didn't sign these players, though. No, no, but the bonds... Like, it's obviously not a unifying factor when he's the Chelsea manager and he's talking about being the Tottenham manager yeah, in the future. Yeah, but how do you unify players that you don't really want? But, but Addy, I'll tell you how. Look, people won't like this example, but this is, this is an example that won't go down well, and in the modern-day game, this would be seen as being really bad. But I read this great story about Jimmy Greaves. Jimmy Greaves went to play for AC Milan. Mm. He's playing for AC Milan. in oh, the a great story. I know right, he's playing for AC Milan in the San Siro, and there was a, a massive melee, a massive fight. The two keepers get involved, everyone's getting involved. Jimmy Greaves, because he kind of rose above it, he was he was trying to do the mature grown-up thing, gets the ball, starts doing kick-ups on the halfway line, sits on the football, right? Doesn't get involved at all. He got fined two weeks' wages by the AC Milan owners because he didn't back his team, because he wasn't fighting for his team, because he didn't get involved in a row. Now, look, I'm not suggesting that you should be getting involved in a row, and I know football's moved on from those days, but... That was set from the club. The club said, you back your team. Pochettino at Chelsea has created a situation where they're not, we're not fighters. We're not backing one another. There is no harmony. There is no unifying force. We're a collection of individuals. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.